Howdy, it's Tubal Kane again, continuing with this series on the Atlas Craftsman lathe. And uh, this is uh, number 230. And be sure and watch the other ones. Uh, they start at 220 just on the Atlas lathe. But uh, this one is a critique on the feed rate of the Atlas 12 inch lathe. And I have been a critic for many years of the uh, feed rates on these Atlas lathes with uh, quick change gearboxes because. In fact, the carriage feeds is, her, is what I'm talking about. They are very coarse feeds if you want a good finish. So the coarsest or the finest feed here is uh, 42 ten thousandths, or let's just call it four thousandths. Well, that's way too coarse for uh, finishing cuts. And what does that mean? That means that the uh, carriage and the tool is advancing four thousandths of an inch per revolution of the spindle or the work. And if you want to simplify that, if we could take a chip and flatten it out and measure the thickness of it, it would be uh, four thousandths. So that, that's what that means. But four thousandths, in fact, is almost a very fine thread, and I'll show you that here in a second. But uh, so the carriage feeds here, uh, you know, start at about eight thousandths and only go down to uh, four thousandths. So I submit here that the Atlas engineers who designed this probably never operated a lathe. Now that is not far-fetched. Often engineers do not uh, understand too much about the final product. I hope I'm not stepping on any engineers' uh, uh, toes here, but I, I do know some engineers and that sometimes they lack a little bit of the practical knowledge in the shop, although most of, often they're brilliant men and they know a lot about math. But uh, let me go over to the other bench and show you something now regarding this, uh, what is the finest feed. You'll recognize this from the last video. That's the, the instruction sheets and operating sheet for uh, the quick change gearbox. But down here near the uh, bottom of this page, I got a kick out of this. Here's a, a thread and a feed equivalent chart. And looking down here for the carriage feeds, which I just showed you, and the finest one was four thousandths, it's equivalent to 240 threads per inch. So. Uh, uh, that just slayed me that they're comparing it to threads per inch and all that certainly would be a very fine thread but it also certainly is a very coarse longitudinal feed. In one of the previous videos you remember that I uh, used the uh, change gears and I set it up uh, with that is without the quick change gearbox now you, re you remember that and uh, in fact we can get finer feeds using the change gears over the uh, quick change gearbox. So in fact, the finest one here is 27 ten thousandths, and that's what I used in that video, but that still is approaching three thousandths, and still, to my way of thinking, too coarse. Let's take a look at some other lathes and see what they offer. I'm over at my Logan 8 20 quick change gearbox and it uh, features a slightly finer feed than the Atlas and if you look down here on the bottom row and they they show many many more feeds than what the uh, Atlas does but in the lower right hand corner the finest of the feeds there is 18 ten thousandths which is just a little bit under two thousandths Let's go over to the South Bend and see what they've got. This is my South Bend 10 Heavy. And, you know, uh, they use a little bit different system here, but in their grid work here, the large number, of course, is the uh, number of threads per inch, and the, the decimal number is the feed. But again, low, in the lower right-hand corner, I'm coming in at an angle. I've got so much equipment in here, I can't even get a a good uh, shot at this, but the lowest one here, equivalent of 480 threads per inch, is seven ten thousandths. So their feed is less than uh, a thousandth. Now, now these guys are thinking. 
We had some brilliant engineers here to put this lathe together. You know, and if you look here, we've still got all kinds of fine feeds that are much finer than the other lathes offer. So that's a, that's a nice uh, machine. And what's the significance of this? Sometimes you want that ultra fine finish. Couple that with the vertical shear tool that I've showed in some of the videos. And if you haven't seen that one, be sure and go back and look on that and you will be amazed. A lot of people have seen that video and also were amazed and tried it and had also great success with that. So look at my video on vertical shear tools. So you couple that vertical shear tool along with a machine that has a capability like this of a fine feed and uh, uh, using uh, soft materials and, and uh, uh, the right lubricants and the right spindle speeds, you can get just a, a finish that just rivals that of being polished or lapped or ground. Let's go to the basement and look at the closing. There's a lot more to this video yet, so don't turn it off. I'm in my basement shop now, and this is the closing 12-inch model 5900. And looking at the quick change gearbox here, which is quite a different configuration of, of the other machines, but the, the slowest uh, feed here is seven, you got an S, extra decimal place there, seven uh, ten thousandths, or you can say just a little bit less than one thousand. So that's well thought out also. And remember that the closing lathe is. Uh, was made by the same company that made the Atlas, but I think that on the Atlas it just was the cheaper way to go. And who's going to complain when they're sold through Sears Roebuck? Like my dad would say, it looks like something Sears made when Roebuck wasn't looking. Now I'm just across the aisle in my basement here, and this is my Atlas Craftsman lathe, uh, 12 inch, that I have had for some time. And I was so disgusted with these feed rates that over 10 years ago, I made a modification, and that's shown in a video, and a lot of you have seen that, but that's Machine Shop Tips number 83, and it's called Custom Power Feed for the Atlas Lathe. So this was my way around the heartache of this uh, feed system. And uh, you need to uh, leave these in the neutral position to, to do uh, what I'm going to show you here. This will be just a short synopsis of this. Very short. Attention Kmart shoppers. I interrupt this video to give you some other uh, unimportant information. On the Atlas that I have out in the garage I showed you what the bearing looked like on the far end and that was a breakaway bearing and that was the protection of the gearing system in case the lathe was crashed. On this more modern uh, Atlas Craftsman they use this clutch here and that was the protection. I don't really know how it works. I paid no attention to it but that is the purpose of it rather than a shear pin. Clausing, on the other hand, used a shear pin, and there it is. And the problem that I had, uh, they supplied aluminum ones. Well, they sheared so easily, they were bordering on useless, so I had to uh, use a, a brass one. That's just a brazing rod, and it, it works just fine. I have sheared it a few times, but it's, uh, it doesn't shear as easily as aluminum. They might as well have used uh, balsa wood in there or a toothpick as the aluminum. All right, back to the subject at hand. My solution to the heartbreak of that uh, feed system was to feed it from the tailstock end. And I took a DC motor, and that was the, uh, the wire feed uh, motor, out of a uh, NCG welder. And you can see it's also got a right, right angle drive on it. And I put a pulley and a narrow belt and it's coupled directly to the end of the lead screw and I did not modify anything here. There's a socket and it fits uh, right over the nuts that were on the end of the lead screw 
and I had to fashion this bracket and uh, that's bolted on here so I had to only uh, drill and tap one hole and that could all be taken off in a matter of moments and as a matter of fact even after 10 years this still has just a C-clamp on it and it has served me quite well this is the control box and that came off of the welder as well and you can still see the spatter on it the MIG welding spatter and I uh, put an on and off switch on there and that's the original pilot light on there a reversing switch up here and the speed control itself watch that belt and the lead screw I would never use that fast of a speed but it would be available might as well use the Atlas system as that and uh, I can slow it way down till it just creeps and it has sufficient torque at very slow speed to move the carriage and that's battle tested half nut lever is engaged and you can see how slowly it's moving and I can move it even slower than that or instantly reverse it as such and of course it works with the cross feed as well and when you look down here at the gearbox you will see that the power is going into the gearbox but I keep this uh, normally in neutral and with these tumblers out you know there aren't many gears that are meshed and turning so there's no wear and tear so that's Tubal Cain's uh, way around the four thousandths I hope you enjoyed my critique of the feed system on the Atlas lathes and compared to the other uh, makes of lathes that I have and be sure and watch the next video which uh, will consist of removing the apron from the lathe and showing you what's all in the apron how it works and how to repair something in fact if it needed repair so I hope you enjoyed this video and this is Tubal Cain saying so long for now and watch my 500 other videos